where we think that uh, there, there, see, the art of strategy is all about uh, creating an unfair advantage for ourselves, right? An unfair advantage will come because of the timing of the product, the way you position the product, the way you segment the product, the earliest that you start off with your product. I think all of these put together creates an unfair advantage for all of us. And our investment in Curio over the last one and a half years time, we've made no sale, but our ability to see that online assessments and online examinations are the future for all of us, I think is uh, going to pay us huge dividends in times to come. And that's something that, because, because of that strategy today, we are much ahead of competition in terms of we being able to conduct uh, this AI powered remote proctored online assessment they for colleges and universities. Okay. So what I've done today is uh, this presentation is something that you guys might have seen earlier, but then uh, do hear out the narrative. And at the end of the presentation, I've added a set of about 15 odd questions and a few answers to that. And we're going to debate more on that because as you go ahead and talk to the people about this, you'll start seeing in uh, several questions coming on from your the people and we should know how to answer them. Okay, so the first, this is, this is typically the sales slide that we are going to use for our customers. And we said that the first thing that we should be talking about is what does School Guru stand for and, uh, and your past credentials. I think I'm, I'm going to also ask the marketing team just to be after this to add the list of universities that we deal with so that they understand that School Guru is one such service provider who has got humongous amount of experience working with education institutions. Because conducting an online assessment for a corporate for their selection process for their trainees, it's very different from conducting an assessment for universities for their comment examination. It's very different. And I'll explain why it's different. Because you should be able to articulate this when you're talking to uh, several decision makers going forward. Yeah. So if you, if, so let me, this slide is uh, taking us all a bit back and saying that in the earlier days, universities and colleges we're making offline assessments, right? And offline assessments worked two different ways. One is when they conducted assessment pen and paper, and also when they conducted computer-based assessments in an offline scenario, where a service provider like TCS would bring a server to the, uh, to the examination centers and sit on that LAN. There were computers on that LAN and then that's inside that examination center. And assessments would conduct, there's nothing to do with the internet, there's nothing to do with the cloud. And that's the way largely assessments happen in this country. Okay? But now the situation is that because people cannot come to a center, people, you cannot print question papers, you cannot print answer sheets, you cannot do physical invigilation, you will have to move to a scenario where you're doing online assessment. Okay? You have to do online assessments and it has to work on many uh, devices because because of this pandemic and because of this COVID-19 stuff, people are caught unawares, right? It has a, it's a, it's a calamity which came suddenly and people didn't get time to prepare. So people got frozen wherever they were. So what happened is students are now at their homes without getting time to prepare themselves. There are scenarios where you'll see that a person says that I student says I do not have a computer or I do not have a 4G Wi-Fi internet at home. And you cannot change these situations in current times. So you will have limitations now. And still, the urgency and need to do an assessment cannot be undermined. Look at the timing of the problem now. Okay, so we are already at the end of April, entering May. By this time, normally most universities would have already gone ahead and conducted assessments or would have uh, moved significantly ahead. Assessment conduction is at least a two months process. Right? It starts right from planning, it starts from question bank creation, printing of question papers, printing of answer sheets, finalization of examination centers, finalization of invigilators, and then actually going ahead and conducting the assessments. That itself over a period of time takes about, about anywhere from three to four weeks time. And then the uh, uh, compilation of marks, using the, uh, all the university rules and regulations on top of it, and then printing a mark sheet. It's not nothing less than two to three months process. But the scenario is every single preparation that college would have done before this are not going to help them now, right? They have to start anew and has to start afresh and think about how do I conduct assessments now? Because now, as we're entering May, the urgency of conducting assessments is actually going up because 
it's important to conduct assessments now because if you do not conduct examinations, you cannot promote your students. If you cannot promote your students, you cannot take their next term fees. You cannot go ahead and admit students for the next term. So all of this is going to severely impact your academic continuity and it's going to severely impact your financial issues, right? Cash flows. So both this put together, the urgency is more. For some time in the past, people still were possibly uh, you know, thinking about is they can possibly wait, they will wait for UGC's directives, maybe government will give some options, maybe the lockdown will get over on 3rd of May. But as time is going by, there is a realization in people's mind that all this lockdown thing is not going to go away immediately. Right? It's, it's going to stay for some more time. And, and people are not going to come back to their campuses in the next two months time. And the teachers will not get ready to conduct a new sort of an assessment so soon. And if this thing do not happen, and UGC has already raised their hands, right? So you read in the newspapers that you just said that universities and colleges who have got uh, ability or infrastructure to, online, to conduct online assessment, go ahead and do it. And people who cannot do it, wait for whenever things open up to conduct pen and paper examinations. I'm largely saying that I leave it to you guys to decide what you want to do. And that's the worst thing that UGC could have done because all this while, over the last so many years, UGC created a problem, a uh, 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 apartheid in this country. You read this article that we wrote in the news, in the Financial Express today, saying that it actually held back colleges and universities to conduct online assessments. And that is a problem which is haunting universities today because they never had that practice. They never had that capability. They never, their faculties have never seen something like this happen. And hence they this COVID-19 thing has caught them unaware. And that is something which is causing the problem today, right? But the scenario is that today, colleges and universities have no choice. They will have to conduct assessments somehow. They will figure out options. So out of the 50,000 colleges and of the 1,000 odd universities, we believe that people will react differently, right? The private universities who can take their own decisions, and the autonomous colleges who can make their own decisions are the people who will react fast because they have to manage their own cash flow. Government doesn't pay their money, their salaries. They have to maintain their own cash flow. They have to maintain out of their own bank balances. And the urgency in them is slightly more than somebody else. Next is the private colleges who want to conduct assessments for their first year and second year students where the university is not in. Those guys will still take their decision fast. And then we believe that the larger universities who will have the pressure now from the regulators, from the student community to ensure the students do not lose a year. So they will now have to take a decision about how to conduct assessments for all their students and the students of their affiliated colleges because they are the examining. So I think that because of our preparedness to hand with a product like Curio, I think we have a very, very significant unfair advantage at this point in time. And we need to monetize this opportunity, reach out to as many colleges, reach out to as many universities and tell them that product like this. The sad part is the last four days, five days time, I have at least received about five to six calls from different colleges and universities who have come to know about us through some other influences in the market who I have spoken to personally. And before this, they, none of these guys were aware that we have a solution. Like this. And that's the sad part. We'll have to get aggressive now. We have to raise our aspirations. And we'll ensure that every college in this country, every institution worthy of its name, every university who needs to conduct assessments, at least knows that school group has a solution. And then you actually are running that race. Today, we, are, we may lose races because we are not even running them. Right? We have to run the races and I can bet that the solution and our experience and our credentialing is so strong that we should not be losing this. Yeah, let's go forward. So when you look at uh, the current challenges in the online assessments, right? When people talking about online assessment, what are the many challenges? One is impersonification. How do I know when I conduct online assessment when students are going to take assessments from their homes? How do I know that it is the student who himself took the assessment or is elder brother took the assessment? This is a big challenge because in an online scenario, if you take online assessments and learning, whether you took it or your friend took it, there's no way to know this. So this is a big challenge. How do you know that the student did not cheat? 
right? He was not reading a book and writing. He was he didn't open one more browser, copy it from there and paste it here, right? How do you know unfair practices did not get used? How do you do proctoring? In a, in, a, in a classroom scenario, in an examination system, there's a proctor, there is an invigilator who is actually, uh, you know, monitoring whatever is going on. And he sees who's using a chit, who is not, who's trying to copy from somebody who's not. And in an online scenario with people at home, how do you do remote proctor? And that's a big challenge, right? And you will have to look at a solution which can actually do this. How do you create audit trail about what happened inside the classroom. For example, UGC has told all universities that whenever you are conducting physical examinations inside centers, you have to ensure that you are doing a CCTV based recording so that you create audit trail. In a remote scenario where people at home, how do you create the audit trail is a question. People will know that this is very, very resource intensive work, online assessment. You have to recreate your questions, recreate servers, recreate online assessment, teach your faculty how to create all of this and then conduct, train students, all of this is not easy. And largely, most of the assessment that we have seen in this country, available from most of the significant players, three, four of them who are playing in this country, can only handle multiple choice questions. But university assessments do not work with multiple choice questions only. They need different type of questions. They need subjective, essay type questions, also. fill in the blanks, they need matching answers. They need multiple type of questions. Can you handle all of these is a question, yeah? So we said that, uh, what can Curio do? Let's look at its capabilities, right? Smart assessments by Curio. We believe that, and I am very, very sure that Curio is one of the finest solutions. One of the finest solutions available in the country today, which can help colleges and universities conduct credible assessments. Why, why, does, why do I say that? One is it's artificial intelligence power. I'm going to show discuss that in some time. What is AI doing in Curio? What is the role that AI plays? It is intelligent. Okay, the platform itself is intelligent. It's scalable. It can, I can, we can conduct assessments for thousands of students and tens of thousands of students. And it's secure. Security parameters. And this is something which is, lies at the heart of Curio and we'll discuss each one of them separately. Right? We said that it has got AI-powered remote proctoring. Means that while the so why when curio starts when the students taking assessments curio will ensure that there are several monitoring mechanisms that starts off in this in the computer of the student one is its microphone will start working so it starts uh, recording all ambient sound whatever sound is going on all around it is something that it starts listening to it starts the camera so that it starts observing what's going on there it starts doing your screen recording whatever is going on in your screen is getting recorded Okay, and it starts recording and all of these and starts observing what you're doing. So if you are, if somebody is prompting something on your ear, there's ambient noise, it starts, the artificial intelligence behind video will tell you that, tell the software that there's somebody prompting the answer. Okay, if you are watching another screen, for example, you open another laptop and trying to see the answers there and started uh, answering it here, the fact that you're looking at different screens, AI will actually automatically understand that and flag you. If you're trying to, you know, somebody else comes in your place and starts taking the rest of the examination and, uh, you know, it will start noticing that there's impersonification. It, it notices that there's one more person sitting next to you and trying to help you. It'll start observing and noticing that and tell you that there's two people on the screen. He's not the same guy, right? So the ability, that means that, while the remote uh, remote talking is going on, you don't need a person sitting on front of the screen and trying to observe what all these thousand guys are doing, which is actually not possible. How many people screens can you look at? And can look at? So you need an intelligence software who, at the back end, is monitoring this and telling you, "See, Rahul is cheating. See, Ravi is cheating. See, in Ganesh's screen, I can see two people." See, this person is trying to use a mobile and taking a prompt from somebody else. It can do all of these and flag you. And so that you can take a preventive action. So AI plays that role, analyzing the behavior and telling you on a screen that what is happening. Curio is one such solution which can handle all types of assessments. Multiple choice, fill in the blanks, subjective answers, essay type, numericals, 
calculative type, fill in the blanks. All of these type question papers are, can handle by Curio. It can take inputs from multiple places. You can have keyboard based inputs, but it also takes voice based inputs. Okay, so Curio has got a solution where, for example, there's a subjective answer and we can tell the student that uh, obviously you can type in case you can't type just speak the answer and Curio will record that answer and teacher will be able to hear that answer, right so subjective questions can be handled by that way we are also working on a solution where student can talk and the system can type so conversion of voice to text is something that we are working on maybe in the next about uh, eight to ten days time we'll have a solution there but at the moment we can actually record the voice solution and take subjective answers input in voice and store it there for the professor to hear it and it works multiple device it can work both on the desktop and the laptop it can work both on the tablet as well as on the mobile phone that's very interesting and, and important it will do auto flagging of events as i told you if there are two people with the input signification somebody goes out somebody comes in it will start flagging and tell you that this has happened and when you see the recording of this child later on after the examination is there they say that I've done a two hours recording of this session. Obviously, it's not possible for me to watch the two hours video again to see where he's cheated. Take me the points where there is cheating. It will tell, take you to the exact that point in the video and say, you see this point, this person was cheating, right? So that's so important because that's, that's the way you can monitor. It. Okay. Extensive logging of events. So every single event item that's happening on the software is getting logged. So the software will take pictures every 10 seconds okay. along with the video it also takes snapshots of pictures and of the screenshot as well as the person and stores it at the back extensive logging so people cannot say tomorrow no sir i was not cheating you are lying everything is recorded extensive audit trail so that everything happened as recorded video can be uh, audited any future point in time it can identify impersonification as i'm telling you it it can handle two way one way and two way proctoring what does it mean so what happens is in a proctoring where I am watching the student. Okay, so student is not watching me. I am watching the student, and and, and everything is coming on my screen, right? And then I observe suddenly that, for example, a boy called Rahul is actually cheating, and he went away, and his sister started answering the question. Okay, so the one is the software will tell him that, hey Rahul, I observe that you are not the person, and if let's say that he still is not changing, and the sister is continuing to doing the test. And you are observing at the back end, the software is telling you that this person is repeatedly cheating. What you can do is you say that I want to talk to Rahul now. So as soon as you say, I want to talk to Rahul now, you will start appearing on Rahul's screen. Okay. The way I'm appearing on your screen on a small window at the top, you, uh, you will appear on Rahul's screen and you can have a conversation. Now this is not done. You stop this. Or I'm going to stop your examination. Okay, so it's that is two-way proctoring when he can also see you and I, I can also see him, but that's selective depending on whose screen I want to appear. Okay, and it gives you interesting analytics. Analytics of two things: analytics of the proctoring and analytics of the examination. So, for example, at the end of the examination, you'll know how many people took the examination, what is the time taken, how many people got it right, how many people got it wrong, what is the average score coming, and which question was performed. How? I mean, which question was very difficult, which question was easy. All of this analytics is something that comes out of Curio, which not only tells you about the student's performance, but also tells you about the performance of the faculty who designed this test. Right? From a management perspective, I want to know both. And that's important. Yeah? So most of your competitors will not have many and several of these functionalities that are found. So as I was telling you that the Curio has two parts. One is the remote proctoring bit and second is the assessment bit. Okay. The examinations bit, how do you conduct examinations? And secondly, how do you ensure that you're invigilating the examination? The first part I spoke about was how do I invigilate the examination? How do I do the proctoring, remote proctoring? Second part is look at the capability of the examination engine in itself. One, I told you that it can handle multiple types of questions. It can handle subjective, objective, multiple choice, descriptive all of these questions you can you can configure predefined timelines so what happens is in an online scenario for example it's not advisable to conduct examination on fixed point in time fixed point in time means uh, for example i said that 
for all the commerce students for the accountancy paper, I want examinations to start at 10, finish at 12. That's a fixed time. This is not, uh, not advisable in online scenario. Reason is there is possibility that once the student was starting his laptop, it crashed. Okay? It's possible that his connectivity broke. All of these are technical problems which can arise when people are working from the home. So we advise colleges that you should not do a do a particular fixed time, but give them window of time. Tell them that any time from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. you should finish this paper. Students will come at whenever it's convenient to them and will take the assessment. So how do you ensure that people... So uh, so one teacher told me that Shantan, then so the first guy taking the assessment will know what the question paper is and tell everybody else. He said that. There is a way to handle this. So there, the system can handle randomization of questions. And so you make a question bank. Let's say you want five questions for every student to come. You make a question bank of 25, 30, 40 questions. Okay. And give instruction to the software that let uh, everybody get one question from chapter one, one from two, one from three, one from four, or one from chapter five. The software will automatically randomly create question papers and give a unique question paper to every student. Okay. So no student knows what question paper is going to come to him. So everybody has to prepare all the questions. So obviously you're not doing cheating. If everybody's to prepare everything in the book, there's no cheating happening, right? So by that, you'll ensure that people can take examination during a period of time. So what happens when a student is already taking assessment and is connected to a book? Our curio actually freezes the test at that point in time, okay? You have already 30 minutes passed, your connectivity broke. So it will freeze the assessment at 30 minutes time. And later on, when you come back, it will start from that point so that 30 minutes gone, this question's already answered, start from here. So you cannot take advantage, undue advantage, but it also maintains continuity. Make sense? Okay. The voice enabling feature is a fantastic functionality. Okay. The ability of the software to store your responses by voice is an amazing functionality to handle subjective guide questions. Okay. So whatever the student said, it's recorded and the teacher will be able to hear it out and mark, give marks to him. It will work out of a question bank. So you can create a question bank and it can do randomization based on this question bank, as I told you, multi-level randomization. So you can put questions not only by chapters, but also by difficulty level within the chapters. So you can possibly say, give him one question from chapter one, which is very difficult. Give him one question from chapter one, which is mediocre. Give him two questions from chapter two, which are easy. Give him one question from chapter three, which is difficult. You can configure like that. And that's the way software is so intelligent. Okay. One thing which is important for universities who have got students across different time zones. Okay. So for example, one distance education university said that Chantana, if let's say I'm an online university and some of my students are from Singapore, how do I conduct the examination? Because uh, when I say that two examinations available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., that 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. is a different time in India and a different time in Singapore. Right. So, when it's Singapore, it's 9 a.m. already students are trying to take the test. In India, India being say two and a half hours behind Singapore, it's already, it's still about uh, six and a half a.m. in the morning and the examiners are not up. How will it work? So we told this, uh, this faculty saying that the curio is so smart that it takes the time zone of the student from where you logged in and it will automatically configure itself. So if you're logging from Singapore, it will start the test for you but at the same time, if you're trying to log in from India, it will not allow you to do this, right? So that's so intelligent in the back. And obviously it has got security, role restrictions, who can watch videos, who can do proctoring, who cannot, who can configure tests, who can add a question bank, who can assess multi-level editing, grading of answers. For example, if you, for subjective questions, some universities said that I want one level of marks to be given by one professor, but then I also want a second opinion on the same marks and then the second answers are taken. That's also possible on Qt. AI powered anti-cheating features, okay? Face detection, it will detect faces automatically and tell you multiple person detection is an inherent feature of Qt. Mobile tracking, if you pick up your mobile now and start talking, put a headphone and start talking, it will say that there's a mobile phone being used in the system. Geo tagging, it will tag from where do you, are you taking this test? It will tag and store that this person took this test from Hyderabad at this place. This person logged in from 
Kanpur in UP from this Mohalla. It will give you exact geotagging point from where this test was taken. It will do live proctoring. While the test is on, it will watch everything and record everything. It will auto flag events of uh, cheating or malpractices, as I told you. It has the ability to do two way proctoring, as I explained. And it will do periodic image capture the way we configure it. As of now, it's configured for every 10 seconds. We can configure it every five seconds also. Take pictures and store these pictures for all future audits. So, how does it work? So, if, if a college uh, said that, okay, Shantanu, in that case, how is it going to actually work for the student? We said that every student, after we all decide and set up the platform, will get an email from the university saying that your assessment for accountancy paper in commerce is scheduled to start from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. tomorrow. Click on this link to go ahead with the examination. When the student clicks on this link, it will take him to a page where it says that download the Curio software in your platform or in a mobile phone. It will download the uh, application on your software and the software will automatically install itself on your desktop. Okay? And then it says that this is your username and password. Put your username and password. As soon as you put your username and password, you will get access, it will, um, it will get access to the Curio examination management system. First, it will ask you to verify your, um, your identity. So you're supposed to show one of your identity documents on the screen. Camera will capture that and record it for future use. And then it says that the test is starting. Okay. Once the test starts working, the test starts getting recorded. The recording of the test is stored on our secured servers at the back end. And the invigilator can monitor live students' activities sitting from anywhere. Right? The principal can monitor, faculties can monitor, depending on who has got the rights. Sitting at home, they will be able to monitor whatever is going on. So here we have used a few screenshots. Have a look how it's worked. Okay? So look at this screen. This boy is trying to look at some book or something. Okay? He's watching somewhere else. And the software automatically gives a warning. Please look into the screen. At the back end, it's flagged, saying that this boy was not looking at the screen, trying to do something else. So it's detecting the child's face movement uh, here. Okay. The software is monitoring and observing that there's one more person who can be seen on the screen partially. Okay, the person is appearing on the back side. So it will detect it and say that more than one person detected. This will be considered as cheating. It will be told, telling you him at the front end. At the back end, it's flagging this event. Detecting a mobile phone usage. This boy tried to use a mobile phone. Okay. And saying that it will detect a mobile phone and tell you that a mobile phone has been detected. Geotagging. It will store this information. Where was the examination taken from? This is what I mean by geotag. Live monitoring of the child's activity. So from, from the remote side, when I'm proctoring it, I can see either his own image or I can see his screen, whichever I want. Both of them be getting recorded. I, if I want to see on it, what is going on in the screen? Did he open a different browser? Did he, is he trying something else? Where is he in his examination? If I can see that, and is he, is he taking a subjective question or an objective question? I can see that and I can see his, him also. Both the things simultaneously. At the back end, it tells me, this boy, 20 times he was not looking at the screen. More than one face detected none, different person detected, and more than one person detected this time, book or cell phone detected so many times. And if I click on this, it will exactly take me to the point in that video where this was detected. Right? If I want to do a remote two-way live proctor, I can click on this and I will appear on his screen. If I click on this, I will start watching his screen, his video as well as his screen. I can start seeing that. So these are buttons which are available if I want to see what is going on with this boy. And this is the place where this artificial intelligence come into picture, right? You don't need people to see that he's cheating software automatically. Two way remote proctoring. This is the way it will appear. This invigilator suddenly start appearing on the screen. Hey boy, I see you doing something else. If you don't change your, the way you're doing, I'm going to stop your examination. So suddenly live video conference starts working for it. Every 10 seconds, the software is capturing his image and storing it. So you'll see a series of image 
and and where where everything is so it's, you can see this person is for example these are all the time he got tired but here see the two people there sometimes he is watching a mobile phone trying to read something else all of this is something that's getting copied and stored for all audit purposes tomorrow make sense so so i think that uh, curio as a platform is both intelligent and it's capable is scalable to handle thousands of students assessments at any point in time it's one of the kind solution with and with school guru's experience of having worked with multiple universities multiple colleges multiple times i think we hold a very unique position so here is what we have proposed a pricing so the way pricing works in uh, in a world of assessment is uh, where we said that it has to work on per assessment and not per student okay so one student taking five papers is five assessments so if a commerce so if a college says i've got 5000 commerce students and i have to conduct five papers for each one of them it means 25000 assessments for us so you measure only in the numbers of assessments and this is a platform which gives this is a complete platform managed platform which will do which will bring invigilation remote proctoring ai completely hosted all completely managed by us university or the college has to just give us a question paper and the list of students everything will be remotely mapped right as the volume of assessments go up the pricing obviously comes down okay but there are two things that i have mentioned in the note that we said that these are these are great opportunities for us to show that how that we are a market leader in this particular space we have to ensure that we are not targeting the very small institute the minimum deal size that we should be looking at is at least 10 lakhs okay and we have also mentioned something like a payment terms customers will have to pay something as advance something as soon as we complete the assessment the assessment is got over and something once we hand over the recording recorded version of the data to them. so payments will get into three different parts okay and uh, and obviously these are our quoted price our mrp we'll discuss specific cases and negotiated price as we go forward okay when we can, when we look at specific stuff this this presentation will be available to you immediately after this on the same course page so uh, so you can actually access this so i have added a few questions which people have been asking me and so let me read this questions answer them any which for you any way for you guys and in case you have questions or more than this then i'll open up the session for question and answer okay the first question people asked me is that what type of questions that the system can handle and for me the answer is that it can handle all sorts of questions not only multiple choice but also subjective questions short answers descriptive type numericals essay type all of these questions but however we have a mark of caution saying that if a university or a college believes that they have got large sections of students who are going to use mobile phone as their uh, primary device for taking assessments so you have to understand that mobile phones at times have got limitations in their own hardware people may be using a old mobile phone or a very low configuration mobile phone. those are possible in those scenarios we advise the customer not to use a mini subjective question because the cpu of the mobile phone may not be strong enough to handle so many so you may want to look at that part but the, from a technology perspective we can handle all sorts of questions next question they asked is that how do you handle subjective questions how do you handle them how do you type the answers typing is not possible so we told them that voice enabling feature is an amazing functionality right so you can though we are currently working on a solution where we can take voice to text but the currently we can record voice if we can record voice which means that students can answer in their own vernacular languages so if aligarh muslim university says that uh, students ko to urdu mein answer dena hai ya hindi mein answer dena hai so no problem right usko wo to recorded version answer wo kis लैंग्वेज देता उसको कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता सर आप उसको उर्दू में देने दो मैं तो रिकॉर्ड कर लूंगा आंसर को टीचर उसको उर्दू में सुनेगा उसको मार्क्स दे देगा राइट दैट्स अ यूनिक एडवांटेज दैट वी हैव वी शुड टॉक अबाउट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन से द हाउ डू यू हैंडल मैथ्स इक्वेशंस हाउ डू यू हैंडल अकाउंटेंसी क्वेश्चंस इसमें स्टूडेंट को बहुत सारा इक्वेशंस लिखना पड़ता है वो कैसे लिखेंगे वी सेड सर आइडियली दैट्स नॉट पॉसिबल ओके द ओनली वे पॉसिबल इज दैट यू स्टार्ट अ मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन यू टेल द आंसर एंड वी टेल द स्टूडेंट दैट you give them a case study saying that agar agar aisa aisa hua to iska answer kaisa hoga okay and then answer is in multiple choice you know that student cannot arrive at this answer unless he actually does it in a pen and paper 
तो ask them to do their rough on a pen and paper. उसपे आंसर डिराइव करें एंड देन ही विल बी टू सिलेक्ट द राइट आंसर. So if you frame your questions intelligently, you can handle that type of question. And you can even tell them that take a picture of your rough sheet and also upload. Both of these are possible. Okay. So that's the only way you can handle maths equations and accountancy type of papers. Next question which are asked to me is that what type of load can your software handle? We said that don't bother about it. My our servers are all cloud based. They are stored in an auto scaler architecture, which means that the, as the load on the server goes up, the servers automatically start adding more resources to itself automatically. So if thousand students server of this size, if two thousand students server will automatically become this size. It's a this is like inflatable type of a server. That's the way we use it. And once the load comes down, the servers automatically start coming down. Okay, so hence uh, we can take any load in terms of softwares. Don't worry about it. What happens to the students who do not have desktops? This is the question that people ask us. Is that that they can obviously work on their mobile phones. So, but the, but the mark of question caution to all of you is that remote proctoring and AI requires a lot of processing power, and <clears throat> it's a it's a resource hungry application. So the amount of remote proctoring that you can do on a desktop is much more than what you can do on a mobile phone right so on a mobile phone you should be expecting that there's some compromise on the ability to take record videos and its ability to take uh, uns uh, take all this snapshot of uh, your uh, images and upload it uh, live to our servers right so these are all a bit of limitation so remote proctoring doesn't work so efficiently on uh, on mobiles though it actually works but it doesn't it's more efficient on the desktop but then in case you are stuck at a solution now where you have no choices i think that's the best solution to go with people asked me that how expensive is your solution look at the pricing right we told them that sir it is not going to be more expensive than conducting your pen and paper examination so when you conduct your pen and paper examination there also there is a cost cost of printing your question the cost of printing your answer sheets cost of your examination centers cost of invigilation cost of Uh, bringing the answer sheets back to your university, right? So they are on various centers. Cost of couriering all of these, uh, then cost of uh, evaluation, sending them to invigilators. All of this is a cost, and it's not cheap. Please understand that we have conducted assessments for some universities on a pen and paper mode, and we understand it's fairly expensive. Any university for their pen and paper examination spends anywhere from 150 rupees to 250 rupees per student per paper today. we have conducted it so we know this cost so our online assessment if you see is in the similar range so it's not more expensive what type of infrastructure is required the client side we said you don't need any infrastructure we'll create it at the student ends you need to, to ensure that they have a desktop or a laptop or a mobile right so this is something that needed at the back end what happens in case there's a break in connectivity at the student end we said that the software will freeze the session that time okay and allow the students to log into the system again and restart from where he left that will ensure that the break in connectivity is taken care of but the next question comes and shantanu is the problem ho gaya student kya karega sara question dekh liya usne and uh, then bolega the network break ho gaya and then he will uh, read all the answers come back and take the answers again so we said that you can configure such a way that only one questions appear on his screen at one point एक ही क्वेश्चन देखेगा वो जब उसको आंसर दे दिया तभी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन पे जाए इफ यू कंफिगर इट लाइक दैट ही कैन सी ऑल द आंसर्स राइट सो यू कैन कंफिगर इट अकॉर्डिंग देन द क्वेश्चन वाज डू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स टेक द एग्जाम साइमिल्टेनियसली वी सेड नो दैट इज नॉट एडवाइजेबल यू कैन गिव देम अ विंडो ऑफ अ पीरियड एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट विंडो मे बी विंडो कुड बी अ फुल डे इट कुड बी इवन अ वीकेंड इट कुड बी इवन अ पीरियड ऑफ 7 डेज टेक ऑल दिस फाइव पेपर्स व्हेनेवर यू वांट राइट रैंडमाइजेशन ऑफ क्वेश्चन पेपर विल टेक केयर ऑफ दैट सो विंडो ऑफ इल बी क्वाइट when questions how do you build a question bank so we said that obviously this can be done by your faculty members but then we can help them and guide them in the how to create a question bank right we also have some question bank with us if the university wants we are willing to help them extend that question bank to them as a help without any extra cost if they want to use that question bank also is a help that we are willing to provide but we are willing to help their faculty members to help them in how to create question bank and what template what format what to keep in mind and all of this the question was what configuration would be required the student side we said that they need a windows pc it will not work on apple macs it will work not work on linux desktop we need an 
Windows PC and it will work fine. And we need an Android phone, it will work fine. This is the two limitations. We have to ensure that that is available. Then the question was, how will we train the students for the exams? So we said that in the same price that I mentioned there, we are willing to give them one mock free of cost. Please understand this well. All students will get one mock test free of cost, which means that we are actually giving them instead of five questions, five papers that are subscribed for, we are giving them six papers, five papers and one mock where they can check out how the platform is. They can download the assessment. They're comfortable with the cheating, non-cheating stuff. They know what is getting flagged, what is not, where to click, where to click when the, when the end of the exam is there. We'll give them one mock free of cost, right? The question is, will we be able to watch the examination while they are live? He said, yes, we will give you the login passwords while our uh, administrators will also watch it. Your people can also watch the examination while they're going live. Okay. How do we get the recordings? We said that recordings are being done on the servers. Once the, exam once the examination gets over, we will download all of these videos and give it to you in the way you want it. Right? If you want it on a hard disk, we'll give it on a hard disk. If you want it to be stored on a cloud server, we'll store it in the cloud server wherever you want it to store it in your cloud servers. We'll give you the recordings. Okay. The question is, how will we get the marks? So Curio has examination system has got a facility where all the marks can be downloaded on an Excel sheet, right? So you can download them all. So their question is, what are the steps once we go ahead? We said that there are only two steps. Once you go ahead, decide to go ahead, you sign an agreement with us. After that, we'll do two things. We'll set up your servers. We'll do a training for your faculty members, helping them with understanding the platform and creating question bank. We'll do a mock for your faculty. These are three things that we'll do. And then we'll get, as soon as your question paper is ready and your list of students is ready, give it to us. We'll upload and create a question paper, question sets. And then we'll run one mock for your students and you're ready to go for your examinations. They said, how fast can we go live? I said, depending on your question paper being ready. Assuming if you have your question paper ready, we can go live in 72 hours. Three working days, we can go live. How about the training of the faculty? They said that we'll train your faculty in two different batches. We'll conduct live sessions. Two batches will conduct training for your faculty, record the sessions for your faculty members so they can access this training again and again. And, uh, and they should be able to conduct because our people are going to work continuously while you are going to you know, take this online assessments. We are going to work as part of your team members. Obviously, our credibility, having worked with so many universities and our credible client list, which should come as slide number three for all of us, uh, for marketing teams to rearrange this will will give them confidence that you these guys understand the criticality of the examination systems for universities right so this is what i wanted to share with all of you guys